I'm CK. Tonight we have another kit from WADA. This is their Mad Lab electronic kit, a junior theremin. If you don't know, a theremin is a musical instrument that is played without touching anything. You bring your hands close to antennas and that changes the pitch and the volume. You can read there's go look on Wikipedia or wherever and you can find a more comprehensive example or explanation. This is considered a level one kit, so it'll be pretty simple. The box, as is typical with WADA products, it's a generic brown box with a sleeve over it to indicate what product it is, which I think is a really smart idea. So let's see. Music, soldering iron, level one, so it should be simple. Reacts to movement, nine volt battery not included, soldering kit. And in the box, looks like we have a circuit board, four LEDs, seven resistors, couple of caps, three caps, a little speaker, that's probably an antenna wire, that's probably a transistor, snap cap for the battery, and two ICs and two switches. So let's see what's in here. And it's a pull tab to open the box. Bring your parts tray over. And the box is of course recyclable, which I like very much. And we'll get the box ready for recycling. Here we've got our instructions. Pretty straightforward. Put the resistors in, put the capacitors in, chips, LEDs, oh it's not a transistor, it's a voltage regulator, battery, push buttons and a little, it's a little piezo speaker. I wonder if we can put another speaker in there and then we put the aerial uh, that detects the capacitance uh, and creates the variable notes. I d this does not appear to have a volume antenna which is very typical for a low cost theremin. And it's got a 555 chip, so that's a timer chip, and it's got a PIC 12F508. I don't know what that is. Let me look that up. I'll probably clip a little bit of video out of here while I look this up. probably an audio chip of some kind or other, of course, because actually it's probably not, because the 555 is probably what's generating the tones. Uh, oh, it's a microcontroller. Huh. That's interesting. 8-bit CMOS microcontroller with a RISC architecture. Uh, 33 instructions, which is not much. That's a relatively simple chip, but that's pretty cool. Let's see the actual parts. Let's make things. I'm keeping your electronics safe, says a happy little bag, which is nice. Nice to have happy plastic bags, I guess. And here's the resistors all stuck into everything. Okay, here's the 555 timer. Again, a very ubiquitous chip that you'll find in almost every uh, electronic product you have. And this is the microcontroller. And as you can see, there's a little 
dab of paint or enamel there. I'm sure that's to let the people at packing know that this microcontroller has been programmed. And then we'll look at the board. No values on the board, so we will need the build guide to know which resistors go where. Uh, the LEDs, it's a non-standard symbology for the LEDs. It's got a circle and then a line outside of the circle. Uh, I'm assuming that's where the cathode goes, or the, the flat side of the LED. And it's not through-hole plated. Well, actually, I can't really tell. No, it's, it's only plated on the uh, outside. But you can see the traces are really clear, so if you ever wanted to work through where, what's going where, that's where you'd do it. So that's it. It's going to be a quick kit, and I'll get the soldering iron heated up, and we'll put it together. First thing we're going to do is all the resistors, and... I don't necessarily do them in the order that they're shown in the guide. I like to do the ones that they're the most of and then uh, go back from there. And there are 300 ohm resistors here. I'm going to check the tolerances on these because they look a little inexpensive, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. This is an inexpensive kit. 98.2, so that's uh, 1.8 ohm below advertised, which is 1%, which is not bad. I mean, I can do that math because it's 100. Don't make me do anything more complicated. Wow, that's almost dead on. These are pretty good resistors. That's nice. And these 1 ohms go R3, R6, and R7. So what we do when we get a new kit from a manufacturer we may not know, two things we want to know. We want to know how close to the body of the resistor we want to bend the leads. Sometimes you have to bend them real close. Sometimes, like in this case, you want to give, looks like about millimeter and a half, two millimeters on either side of the body, so you don't want it right up against the body. You want to have a little distance between the bend and the body. So we'll put all three of these little fellas in there. Now we'll see how the board takes solder. The next most interesting thing. Oh, it takes solder very well. So that's all there is to talk about with resistors. And that means for the other four, it's resistor time, and I will install them without commentary and speed up the playback. So enjoy resistor time for today. Okay, we're back from resistor time, and you may notice this resistor is blue, and this resistor is blue because the kit came with two 10K resistors and no one meg resistor. So I had to go into my bench dock and get a 
one me one meg ohm resistor. That's unfortunate because a youngster who's putting this together probably does not have bag solder resistors. Okay, now we're going to do the two 10 microfarad caps and a clear indication of which side is the negative side, which is the short lead. It's also the side that's got the white stripe on the body. I'll wait to solder that. We'll take this foil cap capacitor. Now one thing I like to do, I don't try and wrestle them out of the tape. I just clip the leads off. Less frustration, less bent leads. And this will go in the only place it can really go, in C1. Now I'll go ahead and solder these before I go to the next step. Next we're going to put the chip sockets on. There's a little, little notch in the socket that you want to line up with the notch on the printing on the board. And I like to rest the socket on my pinky finger. And solder one leg. No, oh, that didn't, didn't get enough solder on there. These the solder holes on this board are a little bigger than they need to be. Now I'm going to take a look at it and make sure it's flat to the board. And it's not quite flat, so get that little extra solder off, and I'm going to reheat this and then press on it with my index finger, and that gets it flat on the board. Do the same thing with this one. And see that one's way up. I didn't get that one very flat at all. But that's why we only do one pin, because then we can just heat it up. Press it down, wait for the solder to cool, and it's all flat to the board again. Now I'll do all those pins. Now we'll do the LEDs, and again, the little stripe corresponds to the side of the LED that's got a little flat spot. It also has the shorter component lead. So put all these in place, and that's the cathode or negative lead. Now a little voltage regulator, and just like a transistor, it's got one flat side. So we make sure the flat side goes to the flat side on, printed on the circuit board. I'm not going to solder that for a second. I'm going to put the piezo speaker on first. Like that, and it stays in place pretty well. That's that's pretty good. And I'm going to put the two tac tactile switches in. They're rectangular, not square, so it's easy to 
know how to orient them. It's difficult to put them in wrong. You can put them in wrong, of course. Humans are wonderful at doing the wrong thing if they're persistent enough. But it's pretty straightforward. Now this, it's interesting. This says, these switches say mode plus and minus. I think they may mean volume for that, but I don't know. We'll see when we get it working. Now we'll put the battery connections through, and of course, as is convention, the red wire will go to the positive. I'm going to do one wire at a time because whenever I do this, I often spaz out, I often mess up, and the wire comes loose. So we go through, give it a nice 100, 180 degree bend. Of course, my wrist doesn't go 180 degrees. There we go. This oh, insulation is very soft. I don't know if you can see my little bendy pliers. Put a dent in it and I wasn't even applying much clamping pressure. Oops, see right there. I pushed the wire back out because I'm hammered on it with the soldering iron tip. There we go. That's done. Now we get our antenna ready. We will want this to be as straight as possible once I solder it on the board. Actually, let me get it as straight as possible before I solder it on the board. Strip a little. Insulation off the end. And let's see, where does that go? The picture is a little... Oh, I see. They want us to weave it. Really want me to weave that? Okay. We weave it through the one hole like that. And we come back around and we weave it through the other hole up the other hole, the ones that don't have any solder pads on them. Other hole like that. Grab my Need one of those pliers to pull this through a little bit. Snug it up. And then one more bend. I'll go ahead and solder that. Pull this back through a little bit to snug that loop out. No, I won't, because again, this insulation on these wires is kind of funky. Next, we'll put the chips in, and I see one is the 555 timer. If you are going to be doing much electronic assembly or design work in your life, Go read up about what a 555 timer is, what it does. It's a timer. It's the basis of many oscillator systems. Uh, it's a flip -flop. It's an easy flip-flop circuit thing. Uh, so it's got a lot of value. And again, they are everywhere. And I'm matching the notch on the chips to the notch on the circuit. 
board and the socket. Now we're ready to go. Let me go get a 9 volt battery out of the battery locker. So what happens with this, with the theremin, is effectively you, your hand is the ground plate of a variable capacitor, the antenna is the other plate of a variable air gap type capacitor, and pitch changes with distance that you're away uh, from the antenna. On my Big Briar, my uh, full-size antenna, uh, full-size theremin, that other loop is volume, and volume changes depending on how far your hand is away from the loop. And by doing various things, if you ever want to see a real thereminist, uh, look up Clara Rockmore on YouTube and watch her play the theremin. As she is. Uh, she started, she worked with Leon Theremin uh, on this, and in the 40s she was awesome. And she, there's a documentary featuring her work, and just to see how she stands so dead still and just works the instrument is amazing and sounds wonderful too. So I'm going to plug the battery in and we'll see what happens. Okay, so. You could hear it was making some noise. I'm going to bring the mic down closer to it. So it's sensing the capacitance and it's holding the value, as you might notice. So again, as my hand gets closer, the pitch goes up. But it's not... Now I'm going to try the little push buttons. I, again, I think they do volume. They could do pitch, too. Because they don't do volume. Let me take it down again. Well, I don't know what these buttons do, actually. Oh, okay. I pressed them both together. And as you can see, this is much more step. almost a chromatic scale. Let me do that again. Now that's more free with the intermediate uh, note values. Let's go back to the chromatic scale. And that's how you play it. Uh, And that's it. So that works pretty well, and that piezoelectric speaker actually uh, works better than I thought. So that's a fun little kit. I'm going to go back to freeform. The only thing that's interesting about the freeform is the microcontroller seems to be holding some values longer or synthesizing values that it's not actually getting because it's. Uh, doing it digitally instead of a full analog audio circuit, which is more appropriate for a theremin. You should have a very smooth 
uh, approach to it, so pure analog is often better. But that's it, a fun little kit. As you noticed, it went together very quickly, and a youngster who puts this together will have a fun little noisemaker to play with, with some LEDs. And if you want to practice, and again, hold your hand like this, is the best result. Again, I learned that from Clara Rockmore. And you can learn how to play stuff. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.